many people, I suspect, are uneasy when they read the cleansing of the temple. It feels to them like violence, perhaps the kind of text that can be and has been used to rationalize violence. Others see the temple in their minds and see it as an attack on religion. Think of this analogy. How many of you have been in church when someone starts shouting and disrupts the service? What feelings arise? A feeling of threat. After all, the shouter is often slightly crazy. Embarrassment. Irritation at being disturbed in one's prayers. Most times, disruptors are just nuisances. But does that make Jesus a nuisance? Now put aside your assumptions about him that may make you short-circuit this exercise. Well, it's Jesus, it must be different. And then imagine what he might be shouting about in a church or synagogue or mosque today. But sometimes disruptors are making a point about something. Corruption in public life, including the church, is by no means unheard of today. Injustice abounds, in fact. Sometimes our institutions, religious and political, social and economic, no matter how old and distinguished, even those that seem to come directly from God, do not live up to the values they officially endorse. At times, they may even be turned into money-making rackets, serving the greed of those who lead. Such circumstances may lead a prophet to speak out, even to act. It is a decision never taken lightly, needing careful and prayerful discernment over whether and how to act. Could it be that sometimes out of loyalty to what an institution stands for, zeal for this house, the only right option is in fact to protest, even for the sake of God, to disrupt a house of God?